What's going on, everyone? We've got a, a limited edition or limited made, limited quantity. Okay, they made 50 of these Riot Knives The Future. This one has been modified and customized um, beyond what you get from the factory. This was sent off to a third party um, modifier, customizer, if you will. Um, so let's talk about that. First off, what do you guys think about modifying a one of 50 knife? Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Or do you just care, not even care? That's the first question. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is mine. I actually uh, got this in a trade deal. Uh, I had something that I was, you know, listed for sale. And the owner of this uh, reached out and said, hey, would you be interested in a trade? And I said, probably not. But, you know, send it over. Send me some pictures. Uh, so he sent me some pictures and a quick little video of this bad boy. And I honestly, I said, well, I will be interested to check it out, but likely not something I want to own and keep in my collection. So I, I figured I would trade it, do an unboxing video and do a full video and then sell it. <laughs> Because I thought this might be easier to sell than the other knife that I was selling anyway. So we did a trade plus a couple of bucks in cash uh, one way or the other. And I ended up with this Riot Knives The Future. So let's uh, talk about what you get. So you get a metal certificate of authenticity, which gives you some details. This is number 37 of 50. A nice... Um, zippered pouch, a cleaning cloth, and some extra hardware for the pocket clip, I am guessing. So, and then a washer for inside, even though this runs on bearings, in case you need a washer. I don't know. I didn't take it apart, but that's what you get when you bought one of these. These were $680-ish new. They are sold out everywhere. But if you are interested... I got one. I, I could I could be persuaded to part with this. Um, yeah, I'm going to list this for sale because it's not something I'm just going to keep. That I mean, that's all. So I don't know. Maybe 600 bucks, 550, 600, something like that. If somebody's interested, hit me up. I will come up with a real price and probably post it on Facebook and Instagram here soon after filming this video so it might be gone by the time the video posts i don't know but we'll see if i get around to it or not but if you're interested hit me up email is down in the description let's dive right into the specs it's five inches closed eight and three quarters overall it also does come with a microfiber bag let's get that out of the way 3.73 inch blade with a 3.86 inch cutting edge, that's because I measure from the shortest piece of the blade so that you know what is really sticking out. This is a Dama steel blade uh, steel. 0.154 inches thick, 0.511 overall thickness minus the clip. Runs on bearings and weighs in at 5.4 ounces. So it's not super light, but... It's not overly heavy either. Now, what's interesting about this knife, one of the things is it's an integral or an integral, depending on how you pronounce it, which means that the handle is one piece of titanium. It's a solid piece. Normally, on a knife, it's multiple pieces kind of sandwiched together with a backspacer or with uh, spacers, you know, barrel spacers or whatnot. But this, this particular one, the Hellraiser, is two pieces of carbon fiber, two pieces of titanium liners sandwiched together, okay? Same with if we go to a Spyderco Delica. It's two pieces of FRN, there's a lock in the middle, and then there's a back spacer. 
that keeps them all together. Well, this is one solid chunk of machined titanium. There is no seam here. There is no taking this apart. You can take the knife apart. You just cannot separate the two sides because, well, it's just one side. The lock bar is just machined out of that same piece of titanium. They're really kind of mysterious to me on how you machine, you know, the machining that it does, that it takes to make one of these. If we look inside, it's it's not uh, skeletonized because you wouldn't be able to actually mill that. But they do mill out a spot for a steel lock bar insert. And they mill out spots for the carbon fiber inlays on this particular version. They mill out holes for the pocket clip hardware. And then they mill out inside for the bearings in this case which we probably won't really be able to see, but you can kind of see some stuff in there. So they mill all that out. It's just, that's just amazing to me. That's one of those things like magnets. Don't quite know how they work, but they work. And like shipping. I don't know how I can ship something from Northern California via FedEx maybe, and it gets there tomorrow in Florida by like 9 or 10 a.m., if I drop it off at like three o'clock in the afternoon, it's still there by 9 a.m. tomorrow. It's just bonkers to me. But anyway, back to the knife. Beautiful damascus steel blade. Nice carbon fiber inlays. This is actually the first integral knife that Riot ever made. Not this specific. This was the this was probably the 37th, because it's serial number 37. I'm sure there was some prototypes and all that too, but you get my point. So this stock, this was just a brushed you know, satin titanium clip. This has been anodized by Sean Campbell, who has done work for me before. Um, he also did the orange peel, I guess you would call that finish on the scales. That's all aftermarket, which does add a bit to it the look and the feel and whatnot. I do like it. Um, I like the, the pocket clip kind of darkened to match the carbon fiber inlay. I like that very much. The orange peel finish, I could take it or leave it. Doesn't really do anything for me, but I don't dislike it either. You know what I mean? So all in all, this is a great knife. It's just really not one I'm going to keep in my collection. And this was designed by uh, Tashi Baruka, who's done a lot of different ones with Riot um, and with Custom Knife Factory and several other companies, which is very cool. Sean Campbell actually worked on this Frederick Knives of mine, changed the um, liner colors, milled the clip a little bit more so that it would actually work better in my pocket. Uh, and just gave it like a little tune-up as he took had to take it all apart and put it back together. Anyway, uh, and then he did some work on some Medford knives for me a while back as well. So Sean's a really good guy, and I was able to meet him at the most recent California Custom Knife Show. So let's do a couple of quick size comparisons with the Sharpie and number two pencil. The D battery and the double A cell batteries to give you an idea so this comes in at 5.4 ounces your d cell battery is five ounces so the knife is slightly heavier than a d cell battery here is the spider codelica we just mentioned i think this is probably the only integral or integral knife that i currently own I think I've done videos on some other ones. This is the Hellraiser P series. And for grins, we'll do the Kubi KB237. Still one of my absolute favorite budget knives at under 40, uh, under $50. 40, I think this configuration all black is 44 or 48. But if you get the satin blade, I think it's literally like $42 on Amazon. I'll put a link to them down below, an affiliate link, just in case you're interested. Um, but there you go. The Tashi Baruka designed Riot the Future. 
cool knife. Uh, works great in the hand. Works great in and out of the pocket. Just, you know, something that's not going to stick around in my collection. That's all. I can't keep them all. I try. I just can't. There's a couple of things I'm looking at. So some stuff just has to go. And, well, here you go. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.